First of all, I'm going to say it's an absolute honour to be in front of you, sir. I mean, I've got mates who've served in the army, good close friends, but not many that have done what you've done. Did you, did you think about that? No, not really, mate. It was a job and I enjoyed it. You know, I got paid for it, but, you know, it's, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to, to meet you and talk about That's this. That's very kind. So, so we're, we're, uh, we're old we're old farts, I guess, aren't we? We are, aren't we? We're, we're, we're the oldest in, born in the 60s. <laughs> we're already oldest in this room. Two young whippersnappers looking at yeah. us over there. Um, I love the book. I really did, uh, for lots of reasons. Mm. Some because I can just relate, not to Warsaw, because I think that was pretty. Problem. Yeah, but you know, but, but also the the relationship with the father. My father was a copper, and right. um, he'd been in the army before that. They weren't great communicators, were they? That's no. in those days. No. I've got a totally different relationship with my children to the one that I have with my Bob. Well, Likewise, my father, you know. Yeah. Um, but go on, tell us um, what was it like growing up in Warsaw. It was, it was, I mean, it was a real fun time, if I'm honest. I mean, look back at it. We, we were, came from a poor, a poor family, like most of the kids in our street. Um, and it was all, we're never indoors, you know. I'd go get up if I, well, when I was at school, I was at school. But when I wasn't, I was out until 10, 11 at night. Back in the day, kids were out all, all hours, you know. And you were out miles away from home, just around up to no good most of the time I was. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me about the hat. <laughs> It was, uh, it was, I don't know why we did it actually. It was like a, a bit of a craze. And what we used to do was steal hats from the old gents, the old trilbies. And, uh, and that really was where I it's first- It's an extension of knock down ginger, isn't it? It's not, yeah. it's, it's a bit more than knocking on someone's yeah. front door. Actually rub, come running up to them and stealing their hat. Exactly. I mean, I could get away with it because I was young, you know, I was, I was nine years old and most of the people stole them off were old men. And I feel bad saying this now, but- When I, you say get away, get away because you could run fast. I could run, yeah. Except for one particular day when I got caught. And then this guy actually became a very influential man in my life. He put me on the on the road to sort of staying out of trouble. He taught me boxing. I think, I don't know if you've read it in the book. Yeah, I, I stole his hat and he chased me and he caught me. You know, I, I was petrified. My two mates weren't my mates anymore. They disappeared. They yeah. legged it. And he co collared me. He just stood in front of me like Kenny Everett with those big hands. I couldn't yeah. get around him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Robin, People don't talking about Kenny, Kenny used to have these big, <laughs> yeah. big plastic hands, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. I, I used to say Dean, I was off, but they definitely don't want who he is, the goalkeeper. But yeah, yeah. yeah so he collared me and um, rather than give me a good hiding, which I was expecting, because that's generally what you'd get, he, he just said, look, he, these are the words he said, you little shit. He goes, there's something about you. Because I went straight into a boxing stance and I'd never boxed in my life. I was nine years old. And he said, so he's a massive bloke. Yeah, you are. huge. Young lad. Nine. How old were you? Nine. Nine years old. And you've, you faced yeah. up. I just, yeah, went to box him. And he went, right, keep the hat, come to my gym. And of course, I'm going to say yes. I didn't want to hide in. So mm. I actually threw the hat at it and legged it. But he told me where the gym was. And it was in a, a pub called the Digbeth, which I knew it was downtown. So I went. Imagine now a kid these days. So, so, so some old man yeah. says, meet me in a, in a pub. pub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going to teach you a box. Ain't happening, is it? Nah. And it's February. It's six o'clock at night. So it's already Dark. pitch black. Yeah. There's snow on the ground. And I'm around the back of a pub knocking on the door to meet this old guy. And maybe lots of his friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine that, saying that yeah, to, yeah, to your yeah, dad yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went in there and there he was. There was a bunch of kids. Some of them I recognised from around my area. A little bit older than me, and he, he did. He took me boxing, and he took me to one side, and he took. That's when it, the first time I'd ever heard. Always a little further, go a little bit further, and I remember him. He just stood That's there. That's become your ethos, hasn't it? It has, yeah. And by pure chance, when I got into the regiment, it's, it's like the prayer of the regiment as well. Always a little further. So yeah, it, it stuck with me through my life. But the old guy, he took the time and he sat me down, and no one had really done that before. You know, not not even my father because he wasn't that way. And he said, "Look." Boxing ain't a, a sport of brutality. Brutality. It's a poor man's game, game of chess. It's about thinking. It's about anticipating. It's about reading somebody's mind and, mm. and staying one step ahead of the curve. And he was brilliant. Everything he taught me, and I, I carried that through life. And he, he was. How, that, but you were you were quite a scrapper, though, weren't you? Yeah, I was fighting all the time, constantly. But also, fighting. kids that are often are bigger than older than you. Yeah, right? and it was always. Is that just inside you? I think so, yeah. I always felt like I, had, I wanted to prove something. I don't really know what I was trying to prove. I was tougher or, you know, I wanted to be somebody, I think. Yeah, and I was always, fight, I'd fight anybody. And I get, I, you know, I come off silver medalist quite a lot. You mm -hmm. know, I get a good hiding, but I get up and go again. You got stabbed, didn't you? When you I did, young? yeah. By two twins? Yeah. It was, and initially, we're friends of ours, you know, and we had a couple of little gangs. And I can't remember the fight started over, but we were on a railway embankment. And I was fighting with a one twin and I was kicking him in the face as he was going down the bank. His brother came behind me, stuck the knife in my back and then he pulled my feet and I just slid all, I mean, I could show the scar later, 
right down my back, yeah. And then Is I crawled on. I was, I was close. Yeah, I nearly died. Yeah. And you know close? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was I was passing, I was crawling back to the house because it, it was about 200 meters from my house, I think. Crawling back to the house and there was just blood everywhere. I was just going light-headed and sort of going in and out of consciousness. Well, do you know what it was? How long was the blade? Do you know? It was no a pen idea. knife. It was, it was a pen knife. It was, yeah, a, it was a lock knife. knife. People yeah. say, oh, people are carrying knives now, but yeah. kids used to carry pen knives yeah, all the time. It, it's always been there. You know, it's just, you know, I think what's going on today is, is worse than it probably has been for a oh, long, long time. But, but but it was always there. This It happened to me back then, and these things were happening. You know, and another time I was in a, a fight in a, a club, and I was only, I think I was only about 16 then, and it, the lights went off for whatever reason. This crap started, and I just felt all this warm around my hands. And as the light came on, the guy next to me, basically half his face had been, he'd been slashed across the face. Did you know him? Yeah. He's a mate? Patrick. Yeah, he was a friend of mine. So he'd been razored, yeah? Yeah, he'd been, he weren't a razor, it was a cut throat. Um, cut, yeah. Cut, yeah. Yeah, cut throat, yeah. Straight across, the, right across his face, missed his eye. So, lucky man. Yeah, very lucky. Boy. Yeah, young Did, kid. Are you still in contact with those people, some of them? Mm, no, I'm not. I mean, actually, I, not most of them, but I, I, I have been in contact with a couple of them. Hey, the guy I mentioned, the book, the, the fire facey, I still now and again sort of speak about, speak to him. And I'm hoping to catch up with him in the next couple of months. In terms of, of what you've achieved, which is immense in terms yeah. of where you, not only just because of where you come from, it wouldn't matter where you're from. What you've achieved yeah. is is quite immense in terms of you look at the different things that you've you've done and succeeded at. Mm. Do you put it totally down to that thing, just going a bit further? Yeah, I, I do. Mean, it's just that mentality. You, were, you weren't great at school, but you cl no. clearly you have to be. What people don't seem to, to to understand to make it to the ranks that you've made it to, both in yeah. the parachute regiment and and in the regiment. Yeah, you have to be intelligent. But it, school wasn't for you. Why it, was it, Why was the army for you then? I'll tell you why. Because I didn't see the relevance of what I was being taught in school. I didn't understand why I needed to do maths and and the stuff that I was doing. But when I, I got into the cadets and I was in what they were teaching me was like first aid and I could see the relevance to it and then how to strip a weapon, how to read a map, all that. So that was what I enjoyed. So I gravitated to that straight away. And then again, when I was back in school, I just, I just couldn't was it the absorb way you, what or, I was being told. Was it, was it the way, Billy, that you were being taught? Yeah. Possibly. I mean, I, if, when I look back at the schooling, although I was probably one of the worst kids you could ever want to teach, I was a frigging nightmare. I didn't. I, I didn't think the quality of teacher we had then were particularly good. You know, they just give you a book, read the book, and then answer the questions, that sort of thing. And that's that's how it felt to me. And I just had no desire to be there and do that. So I didn't go after thirteen, basically. But you you did go to kind of like army, yeah, cadets. Yeah, I did. Yeah, Naval, it, was, it was marine cadets. Marine cadets. Yeah, which and was there was a, a guy weird. there as well that was influential. Yeah, Matt Gaunt, who was the leader of the cadets. His two sons were in the cadets, and his daughter. An amazing guy, and he talked. He, he, you know, he talked as uh, to the kids as we were, as uh, like adults, and treated like adults. And if you stepped out of line, you got a clip around the ear, mm. and that's what I was used Which to. That's what I now. expected. No, Sorry. you couldn't do that. I'm not advocating hitting children, obviously, but it, well, there were different times, right? Yeah, absolutely. And he worked for us. He, he was installing discipline. You know, you knew if you stepped out of line, you you pay the price for it. Mm. And he was he was just such a great blogger, and he took time with everybody, not just with me, with all these kids, especially the rogue kids like myself. He, he got the pleasure of sort of, it's like, I guess, trying to uh, break in a, a wild stallion. You know what I mean? Took the time to break down those barriers of, you're not a tough guy. This is how, it, how it's going to go, my way. And and that was that's what it was. And I, I really sort of gravitated to that. I like being told and disciplined, but being taught something that I thought was relevant. And that was yeah, the difference. Yeah. I mean, that's school. the point, isn't it? Being told yeah. something that, that, yeah. that, that chimes inside yeah. you and also has a point that you understand mm -hmm. or, or you know that voice they used to do wah, 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 wah. it just i, I mean I'm, mate, I'm like the window i'm like going oh, i wonder what it'd be like to be an actor one day i wonder what it'd be like I wonder if d'artagnan was real i don't know i like, I like swords i like i like mm, you know well yeah kim <laughs> um and yeah no i get i get that so so why why the paris then well, so I'd, I'd spent six years as a cadet, Marine cadet, and it was, I just missed out on the Falklands for, uh, I'll talk about that in a bit, but I wanted to join as a junior leader. I didn't know where I really wanted to go, and it would have made sense for me to go to the Marines. You're really young still. Yeah. How old are you? 16. 17 when I actually got in, but six, I'm 16 now, and you know, in the cadets, and what had happened was- Was he pushing you towards the Marines? No. He, that was the beauty of it. He he just he said, "Look, the military is your career. That's where you really need to go. That's where your heart is. That's what you've got to do." And he was right. But 
he never sort of forced any direction of where to go. I mean, lads that were his, his own son, one went in the Marines, one went in the Grenadier Guards mm. and had amazing careers. And what had happened was the Falklands had just finished mm. and we had a party for the guys coming back. And the lads before me that had gone, some had gone to the engineers, the paras, the Marines, the Navy, they all come, came back. And there was one guy there uh, that had been shot twice on Mount Longdon. And I listened to all the stories and there was something about his story and what the parachute regiment was about that I thought, that's got to be me. That is me. It's the rough, the raw, no straight lines. This is how, it, you know, and I thought that's got to be it. And it was, and I was, it was the best decision I ever made. <laughs> Not because he got shot, he wanted a friggin' <laughs> shot like, you know. No, but, 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 but particularly three para. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I went through depot and yeah, I went to three para. And at the time, three para were in Belize. Right. It was an amazing I've been time. To, yeah, I know a place called the Black Orchid. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out on Google. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. Um, I only visited it because I was doing an investigative kind of journalistic piece of work at the time. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Let's not, let's not go to police just yet because um, yeah. look, you not only did you, you, you pass, you became the yeah. best cadet. Yeah, the best Champion recruit. recruit, yeah. Champion recruit. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I mean, 70 started and seven of us originals finished. And again, it was... 70? 7-0, yeah. And seven finished. As in... But the, that is a bit of a story of your life, isn't it? Yeah. And that I number mean, is I all mean, seven. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, in, but it is in terms of the fact that every time that you've mm. been set a challenge and yeah. you've had a number of people all competing yeah. to actually get to that point, you have been the one or the yeah. four or the three that have done it. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, it's that mindset. What, why? Mate. Why? Because I wanted it. I needed it. It's what but they I, it, would have it wanted it as well. Why? Did you just want it that bit more? I guess so, yeah. Or and you I just, just built that bit better? Or are you... I, I mean, think it's a combination of all but, that. But what about your pain thresholds? I mean, I've, it's just... You just put it to... It's in the mind. What If you've, if you've got... You know, when people say, oh, if, it's in your, if you've got the right mindset, you can do anything. That's not true. But you can certainly do a lot better than... You know, not, not attempting, yeah, and, and somebody who hasn't. And I just remember, I, I saw everything as a challenge. I saw everyone as a challenge. And I took it that way. I remember, you know, standing on the square as a young kid, looking down, and I was the skinniest, I was the youngest. And these these were men with hairy chests and tattoos. And I was, you know, I was a little a little fish now in a big pond. And I knew that. And I was looking around thinking, what the am I doing here? I've got no chance. Look at the size of these people. And then as they started to fall, it gave me strength. And thought, you know, I can do this. And I'm doing it. And I just, and it, it did, it, it gave me more confidence each time. Every time someone else went by the wayside, I would, it just pushed me even further yeah, as, to go. I've got to go. Yeah. 70 shrank to, to 50, yeah. to 40, to 30. Yeah. I got up every like time every, that did, it gave it, it a buzz. I got up like every everyone else thinking, what am I doing here? Aching, you know, not wor knowing what's coming next, wondering if I can still do it. But then you start the day, just kick into it and you just get on with it. And again, by the end of the day, another two have gone. There's less, you know, people in your room. I'm like, wow, this is great. I loved it. Mm. And that was the same as on selection. Exactly. I'd, I'd see people in front of me on the mountains and I'd go, right, he's my next target. Forget about 4Ks now and whatever you've got to do. He's my target. And I'd get up to him and past him. Then the next one, where he's, go. I'd just keep going like that. I mean, the that takes, But that takes something. Yeah, I, don't I mean, think it's something that I definitely haven't got. Something that, that the majority of us don't have. Well, and, that's what the, and that's what the regiment. And, but you, I've written the book. P company, harder than selection? Yeah. Why? Because I was a kid. I was 17 years old in a man's world and it was, you know, I weighed about eight stone. But you still, you yeah. still did it. I know I did, yeah. Because I wanted it. How many passed? Uh, the uh, Paris, for the Paris. P, P company, yeah. Oh, I can't remember how many passed P company, but I bet half failed it, at least half. Yeah. And again, I was the skinniest. I remember being on the log, which was the hardest event I've ever so done in my got, life. Just explain to people, yeah. it's a very long log. It's a telegraph pole. And it, and it's got yeah. grips, yeah. steel grips. Well, no, what he was, it. it's it's rope. rope. It's rope, rope grips. So you got six. Po so it's swinging around as yeah. well. Yeah, you got six portions along the line, and there's uh, eight of you on there because there's one at the front, one at the back. But by the time we finished, there was only three of us left on the log, and I was on the front. And there's a guy swinging at you. Oh my god! The blow behind my arm was like freaking Stretch Armstrong yeah, when I finished. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was literally dragging it. My arm went out. Of out. Yeah. And it's only two miles, but I'll tell you what's the longest it's two only miles. only two miles. Yeah. How, how heavy was that log at the end? <laughs> About 120 kilos or something. <laughs> it's outrageous. And the guy on the back was a bloke. You know what I mean? He was yeah. hardly, he went even out of breath, I don't think. So what was the age difference between some of the people on that peak? 
they were from me from 17 and then the eldest was about 26 27 i think but you still passed yeah. as the top recruit yeah i did yeah it, why because i wanted it i wanted to be the best i wanted to prove to myself not didn't only did it initially i wanted to pass the course that's the first thing in my head then i want to beat that guy next to me then i want to beat the next guy and i've always got the mentality to keep doing that did keep you trying when you were boxing yeah oh yeah i could tell probably like yourself from the moment I stepped in the ring, once the I took, once, win. once I threw the first punch, win. yeah, the first punch, once I threw the first punch, I've, I just knew I'm going to win this. And I did pretty well, actually. I didn't do too bad. No, no, no. no <laughs> my first that. fight, I boxed, uh, no, it, wasn't, it was my second fight, sorry. My first fight, I, I actually boxed, I'll say then tell the story in there, my sparring partner. Yeah, yeah, because you got, you both came from the same gym yeah. and there wasn't someone to match, no. you matched against you, so yeah. you put against each yeah, other. Yeah, and I had to box for another so club. Mate. Your yeah. mate, sort of. Yeah. But he put me in another club and it really upset me because I thought, they obviously think Mark's going to win. Because he wasn't he um, an exhibition, it was a fight. Mm. And then the next fight, I fought the the um, Welsh champion. He was, he had 30 odd fights. I had two. You yeah, know, really? it, was, it shouldn't have happened, to be honest. And it's I remember it. Oh, it was a bad match. But the, I, I beat him. I knew I was going to beat him. I was that nervous. I was on my toes. So why did you not progress in that direction? Boxing. Yeah. I, it was an option. Uh, when I got to 16, I was toying with, do I stay? Do I, you know, do I turn professional or hang in there a little bit longer? And I just thought, nah, I wanted the army thing more. It was more in my blood. So I thought that's where I'm going to go. For that's me, I, I actually basically started bottling it. Once it got to about 13, 14, it got very, very heavy. I mean, probably. Up, in boxing? Yeah. yeah. I can remember, yeah. Yeah, people used to smoke, didn't they? Yeah. They you couldn't even see out the ring. Above you like a snooker light. Above that's right. You. The, the ceilings weren't that high, yeah. so it was like you were virtually well, like the third round, gum yeah. shield out because could barely breathe. I've smoked fifty fags already. You can't believe it. Can I've got you? three three minute rounds. To, yeah. Well, one more three minute round to go, and I can barely see him through the smoke. Um, and um, it was yeah, no, cool, I, it? I actually bottled it towards the end, and my rugby was getting better. And I also mm. weirdly wanted to become a tap dancing actor. What happened? Well, how, how, how did you get into that? How did you? I just knew. I just knew. I just knew. Um, I say I lived in a street. Um, we used to watch the banana splits, uh, mm. something you're familiar with. <laughs> Many people may not be, but I advise I you to watch it. Uh, and we used to go out and like cut, we had pen knives, kids did. Yeah. We used to like cut some twigs down. They were suddenly your rapier and your sword and you were off doing yeah. your free musketeers, mate, or whatever it may be. Um, and I just, I just got into it and I just wow. thought, wouldn't it be nice one day you could go out. Well, you've done more films than I've done and you've acted <laughs> more movies than I've done. So I've got to get to that in a minute. Okay. But you know, and the reality of it is very different from the dream, isn't it, often? Yeah, yeah it is. And it, it is. It's actually um, freaking hard work. It's freaking hard work. <laughs> it is hard work. And also, can be rather boring. And also, yeah. the other thing about what you do is, and I've never done what you do, but I've been to some of the places that you've been to and seen what some of you guys go through. And that is no joke either. Yeah. But we'll get to that. So you're in the Paris. Yeah. You're very young. Mm -hmm. What was it like? It was, again, it was this new world now. You know, but, first but time away from home. You've got as well. that red berry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's one of the proudest moments of my life, mate. I'm now in this family. I'm in this elite unit that many have tried for. Got and can't a, get in. Got an unbelievable history. Yeah, and you know, a lot have come and tried and don't get there. And I got mm. there, and I did well there. And I, I, it was what was it like brilliant. when you went home? Oh, I felt like I was six foot, feet tall, mate. You know, I, I just felt like I'm, I'm the man in the house again now. It's, this is brilliant. And what's the relationship with your dad like now? It was brilliant. When, when I come back, it was, it was, it was really he proud He came of me. to see you pass out. He did, out. he did, yeah. But again, he showed no emotion. They didn't. No, he well, didn't. My dad's just like, yeah, all right. It, you know what? I didn't really understand what my dad was all about until after he died. I had to do the eulogy for him. And this is when I found all this stuff about, you know, he knew a lot more about me than I, I realised. So to, to, to talk, was this, we talk about, you've had a lot of tough moments. Yeah. You've been through a lot of tough experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this... The toughest thing that you've had to deal yeah. with? Yeah, it was, yeah. And I don't know why, because, you know, I've had blogs dying around me, pals, you know, I've buried a lot of them on, on this journey. So I was losing somebody, it, it became second nature. Not, not to be so big at it or weird about that, but it did. It just, it was part, part of the job. But when my dad died, and although we didn't seem to have that super close relationship, it, it was just now all of a sudden... I'm not going to be able to talk to him again. I'm not going to be see him again. I'm not going to have the arguments with him again. It just it was it was just did, did, did hard you feel, to take in. Did you feel that you had left the conversations unfinished? You'd left a yeah. resolution between you and him unfinished. Yeah, I think there was a lot more I wanted to do with him. You know, when he came to the NBA, unresolved. Yeah, unresolved stuff. Yeah, and I just 
never got a chance to do it. And the thing was, it was a total surprise when he died because my mum had had cancer for two years. And it, it was like almost like a standing joke. I'd come home on leave and I'd walk in there. I was going, are you still alive? What are you doing? Mm. And it, we'd have a laugh about it, you know, and she'd sit there with a little face and dad would always laugh about it. She always defended you, didn't she? Yeah. Oh, no. she was amazing. Whether, whatever you yeah, may have I got I couldn't do to. anything wrong. Well, nobody could. She'd never say a bad word about anybody, but I couldn't do any wrong. But it's funny now, you know, I go to, as we're older now, we don't go to weddings anymore. It's more funerals because mm. all the families are dying. And every time I go there, a few aunties that are left still say to me, oh, you're the one who put the grain around. <laughs> Give me a break. Thanks I'm, for that. Yeah, I'm 50 But your dad, now. let's go back to the toughest moments. Yeah. So, so your dad passes, you go back home and, and you're trawling through stuff and what yeah. do you find? Well, just just before that, so I, on, like sure. I said, my mum was dying and I was expecting it. I was out away in Q8 at the time. So I'm in Q8, phone rings early hours of the morning. It's the inevitable. You think, oh, here we go. I pick up the phone to an hysterical sister crying her eyes out, can't get a word out of her. So I'll lose my temper with her a little bit. Get a fucking grip yourself, what's going on? Anyway, she calms down, she says, um, I says, it's mom, isn't it? She's dead. She, she went, no, it's dad. And even now I could just feel my freaking heart beating. Mm. I'm thinking that. And I was just like, what What did you just say? And she goes, dad's dead. And that was it. And then put the phone down. I was like, I'm starting calling all my, my brothers and my sisters, uh, the other sister, going, what, what's going on? And she goes, dad's dead. He, My dad had had cancer. And I hadn't told anybody, not even mum. He kept everything. That's but, the kind of man he was, by yeah, the sounds of yeah. it. He, I think he... Is there, is there a lot of you in him? I think so, yeah. Yeah, there is. But I, like we talked about earlier, I run my family different to the way my dad did. Mm. I spend as much time with my kids. I spoil them to death. My dad was mm. not like that. Mm. You know, you had to get out, you had to work, you had to... He was a grafter, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And so was your mum. Yeah. 12 hour shifts, the pair of them. And so, they used to back and flip, uh, flip over. So, so y y your dad's passed. Yeah, yeah. You get on a plane straight away. Yeah. I come back, get to the house. I then take charge of everything because the family's falling apart. So, you know, But there you to, go. The, the, is this because you're Billy Billingham? Or yeah. is this because you're Mark, which is your family <laughs> yeah, name, right? Yeah. It's because I'm Mark, I guess. I'm now in the family. When I'm in the family, I'm Mark, you know, so... I, I, I say I did the falling apart. The, the sisters are great. They arranged all the funeral and all that sort of stuff. But I had to sort out the eulogy and, you know, getting rid of his stuff and all that stuff with my sisters and my brothers. And that's when I found the box under his bed. And it was all... Under his bed? Yeah. Two things I found, which I just found <laughs> really weird. He's an atheist, right? Mm -hmm. And I found a Bible. <laughs> he had a Bible under the bed. And then he had this box. And in the box was all the paper cuttings and all the stuff from the days in the parachute regiment in Northern Ireland to, you know, me getting decorated for, in the regiment, to oh, everything. He had he, so much. He had the passing out parade. Oh, we might mention the fact that you are an MBE as well, sir, amongst yeah. many other things. There are yeah. other uh, awards you've received for gallantry, which yeah. is quite an honour, no. isn't it? Yeah, so, so you found this box. Yeah, and it was just... What, did, just, what did you do? I, I don't remember, I just sat in his bed. I almost felt like I was going to cry. I didn't, but I was just looking through going, you old fucker, why didn't mm. you tell me this? Mm. Why didn't we sit and have these conversations? That's, that's again, the unresolved. We could have had a beer and talked about it. I could tell you the stories of how it happened and what did happened. He ever, did he ever truly tell you that he was proud of you? Yeah, he did. He did. And the one thing I, I'm glad to say, and it, you know, to say to your dad, I love you. Mm. He, he was like, you just wouldn't do that. He'd look at you like, What's, what are you on about? Yeah, yeah, what are you yeah. talking about? And, and I did. I got a chance to do that. And he did. He, it was that shock on his face about... What did you just say? <laughs> like, oh God, don't worry about it. <laughs> but I got a chance to do it. But yeah, he was, he did. He was but proud you still of felt, particularly when you found that box mm. with all those cuttings in it, of all the achievements that, yeah. that you've managed. There was explanations to all that, which I could have given him. You know, he's only got what everybody else got was a bit in the paper or mm. a secondhand story. And I you wanted to told, have a beer. You could have told him. Yeah, I wanted to, to. And that was the unresolved bit. And the thing that really made it so difficult for me. And I kind of, I didn't have PTSD, you know, everybody talks about this PTSD thing and I did, never believed in it because of what I've been through and what I've done. And I think, well, why isn't it affecting me? But everybody's different. And it is there, it is true. And but mate, I, it has I didn't affected you, but you don't realise that it no. has. Sir. Well, maybe. It knows. I felt then it did. That's when that I was, I went to, home? Yeah, that's when it, it, I really, I was like, you know, I was just in this world of depression for a while. I just couldn't think straight. I didn't want to do anything. And I just couldn't get it into my head that he'd gone. I think what numbed the shock of that or got me through it quick was three weeks later, my mum died or four weeks later, sorry. 
you know, so I was back to the shit. What's, what, how do I deal with this now? And then writing the eulogy for my mum, like, you know, but it was while I was writing the eulogy, I really thought about what was he like? Who is he? And I, I realized he was, and I always described him as he was, he was a ring of steel around the family. He was there to protect us and do the best he could. He didn't have to pat us on the back and all that sort of soppy stuff. He made sure you did the right thing and he protected. You know, yeah, but he did. He was, he was so tight and close around the family, making sure that, you know, we, we did have food on the table. We did do this. Yeah. And it was just a hard time just to never to have been able to really share those stories and those moments with him. It's like when I won the boxing, when I won the Midland tile, my mum was there, he wasn't. And I wanted my dad there so bad. Mm. And it was on a Saturday afternoon, so he had no excuse not to be there. He wasn't working. He was at the pub and it really pissed me off, if I'm honest. And it was always like that. And they, when I got the MBE, you know, and I, I, I was just so glad he came. You know, because it was just... It's a massive amazing. moment. Yeah, it was It was awesome. It really was. For them. I remember walking in and seeing their faces and they read out the citations of why you're getting this award. And my dad's like, looking at me and going, he did what? <laughs> he, he, he what? <laughs> and I could see it. And, and he's like... And I was chuckling And also, you've been so busy with the regiment. It took how long for them to actually... Four years. Four years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel bad saying that, but yeah, four years. By the time I got the fourth letter, which I've still got at home, it, it weren't so polite. It was, was like, like, get your ass out of the yeah, back yeah, of your palace. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you've kept her waiting four years. <laughs> and actually, when I went in front of her, she was being busy, Mr. Billingham. I went, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, it was a great moment. It was awesome. But just seeing their faces, like your mom, my mum and dad, and they died not too long after that. So, but At least they got to see that. Yeah, they did. So I'm glad of that. But I, I would love to have been able, like I say, talk through those paper cuttings, what it meant, what was actually going on, what was real. Mm. You know, but unfortunately it didn't happen, so... So you're in the Paris and you yeah. get whisked away to jungle train, don't you? Yeah. Or you're off out to Belize. To Belize. The, yeah. the battalion was already out in Belize. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't even know where Belize was. <laughs> I remember saying to my mum, I just heard Central America. You're going to free power there in Central America in Belize. I went, Central America, brilliant. Sandy beaches, chicks, beer. Mm. I remember ringing the old gal up. My Belize mom, cities were the yeah. most dangerous shitholes I've ever been to in my life. Sorry, everybody from Belize. <laughs> Be pretty easy. To, it was I, mean, the time, I mean, little gangs wander around the streets with AKs oh, yeah. and everything else, and machetes and pangas <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It is a danger. It is, can it's be a very yeah, dangerous can, place. Yeah, lawless. Yeah, you know, and the value of life at the time was none. I don't think it's improved much. Yeah. We didn't get much time, to be honest, to go into the city. We it's all right if you're, going, the if you're going diving in the, was the deep the blue, the keys and the deep yeah. blue, whatever it's oh, called. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. Absolutely stunning. I actually went back and forth for Belize probably about eight times over my military career, teaching jungle warfare and stuff. And I saw a massive improvement there. It's, it's absolutely beautiful out there now. They've tidied up the streets a bit. They're still, like anywhere, they've got the ghettos. Where you go, right? Yeah, of course. But I mean, like the, the commercial side of it, it's phenomenal for the diving mm. and the holidays and all that. It's really, really good. Really mm. nice. But I loved it. Just so, loved it. So you arrive, you arrive yeah. in Belize. Mm -hmm. You've just passed out. Yeah. The new boy. New boy. And, and, and I think you're really humble in the book because you talk about, you, you sort of learn very quickly what your place is. And it was yeah. at the back of the queue Absolutely, carrying the heaviest yeah. piece of kit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a t-shirt, right? Because this is now 80, 1984. It's got Belize 84 on it. And because I was a crow, the new mm, boy, they went, mm. ah, got an idea. Crow 84. And there's a, the weapon, the Carl Gustav, the 84. It's <laughs> a big rocket launcher, right? <laughs> they give it me. They go, right, you can carry that as well. Let's you be fair. fire that how in the jungle. You, how much did you weigh? I was about eight and a half stone. And how much did that weigh? Freaking you know, hell, about 40 pounds or something. And then the ammunition on top of that. And, and also. And then the, the gun as well. Oh, it was horrendous. So, and, and all the lead. Yeah. To go with oh, it. yeah. Yeah. Um, and let's be fair, Belize is a sticky, oh, humid, hot, ninety percent humid, humid, malarial, yeah, everything kind of like. Mm -hmm. Every you sit down, wants to bite you, eat you, and yeah. take some blood out of you. I got leishman isis out there. Did you? Yeah, later on. Yeah, not on this trip. On the first trip, some years later. Yeah, that was horrendous. That was. Descri yeah. Describe leishman isis. Well, it's it's basically it's it, it's caused by sandfly, and what it does, oh. it, like. It, it, it creates a bacteria or something inside your skin and then starts eating away inside, internally. And the only way to, to cure it is, I don't know what, it, what they're doing now, but you, you have these injections every day and it's um, it, it, they worked it off your weight, your age and all this sort of stuff. And it's, it's basically like a chemotherapy in an uh, injection form. You actually inject the stuff in and then you feel it, you can feel it going around your body. You have to lie there for about two hours. The, you take the cannula out because I can't leave the cannula. It rots the cannula straight away. So, so you put you're the basically cannula in. poisoning yourself yeah. to get rid of a poison. Yeah. And then they, for an hour after, you're monitored, your heart rate's monitored. 
because it starts to mess around with your, your rhythm. And it, mine actually inverted. And they got, I think I got to a sort of like 27 days. I got two more days to go. Were you treated in Belize? No, I was treated here. Back, you got flown. In, yeah, in London. Yeah. So I got to 28 days, I think it was. And they were like, touch and go, should we stop this? Once they stop it, you have to leave it for a long time, then start the whole thing again. But luckily, the were you in the regiment then? Yeah, I was in the regiment. Yeah. Yeah. I think about eight of us got it from that Belize trip. Yeah, we and that were, was just like, uh, but you talk, you talk about the jungle like it's um, sort of cross between Disneyland and Utopia. I yeah. mean, I know it's a beautiful place, but I've, and I've been to a few. Yeah, I found it, I found it quite difficult and quite noisy and very very scary at night. I have to be it's, honest. It's intimidating, and it was for me the first time. You know, I'm itchy. Look, yeah, <laughs> I, I remember. I'm going out to Belize and all I'd seen is Tarzan films and I'm thinking, that's what it's going to be like. You know, you see all these, you don't, well, you do see animals, you see snakes and spiders and all that stuff that wants to bite all you. All the bite you, you don't yeah. often see, uh, I have seen one, I did see when I was out in South America, I did actually see a wild cat. I went yeah. out with the Agoni people um, in, um, oh, in Ecuador. That was right. quite an amazing trip. Yeah. But also, Rather very, very big, very big snakes, which I don't oh, yeah. like snakes. I'm not a fan. No, I, I ain't the big fan of snakes either. The spiders don't bite me. Uh, but bite Bites, me, don't yeah, bother yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Snakes I don't like. But it was, yeah, it was, it was claustrophobic. You know, the first time in the gym, you get dropped off in the middle of nowhere. And the, the only bit of opening there is where the helicopter can get in, and then you're out. And it's everything's so close, so noisy. And it is, it's intimidating. And you're soaking wet all the time, sticky and so you insects have your, you, all you over. Say, you have your, white, your wet bag and your dry yeah, bag, right? yeah. Why? So every wake up in the morning and you put, put on that stinky, wicked, yeah. sweaty, dirty, muddy, stinking, it, and it does. It stinks a piss. Yeah, ammonia. Yeah, ammonia. That's what I was after. Yeah, and it's it, it, it's uncomfortable initially, but they don't get used to it. You just it just becomes second nature. Well, some people and can't. I loved it. Well, no, some, some people, people can't. can't. Some people like to have free showers a day and like to smell good, but mm. I didn't bother me. I loved it. I really did take to it straight away. You know, it was hard. It was really hard. I mean, I mean that idea. The boy from Warsaw he used to get yeah. into scraps. All of a sudden, mm. being in a helicopter, rushing across the canopy, getting dropped yeah. into an LZ, and then wandering off into yeah. the jungle. I it couldn't be... Well, I haven't said that. The two jungles, Walsall <laughs> and Belize. <laughs> jungle, yeah, 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 into the real jungle. Yeah. And it was great for me. I felt like I'm, I'm contri contributing to something. This mm. is important. You know, and I felt I, I've you, got a chance to be something. You're in the Paris. Yeah. Um, you, you, your girlfriend, who you were in a fight. Yeah. yeah. Like you do. Julia, yeah. My first <laughs> wife. <laughs> Yeah. Kids, by yeah, this time, I have, yeah. No girls, I, I, no, I hadn't. I hadn't. I, I was. She was still my girlfriend then. We hadn't got married. We didn't get married till uh, eighty six. A couple of years later, yeah. So, but, so you do your jungle training. Yeah. You get through that mm -hmm. back of the pile, carrying the heaviest piece yeah. of kit. Yeah, big and Carl Gustav rocket launcher. Everyone else had was been that to a war. wired device out of interest? Was no, it? it's not. Right. It's not. It's a. Uh, it, it's rocket rocket launcher okay. thing. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Um, Sorry, where did I get to? You were just we're in Belize, and you're you're yeah. getting getting a hard time, but you're actually beginning to enjoy it. I was loving it, but the thing was as well, everybody there, or well, nearly everybody there, had been to war. They'd been in the Falklands, right. so they'd done it, improved it. So I knew I was being taught by people. Something, who'd something done it. happened when you were there yeah. that brought home the kind of morbid reality oh, yeah. of what it is to be a soldier, particularly in yeah. an elite regiment. Yeah, it, again, another that was quite it's quite a sad moment, if I'm honest. Um, there was a guy when I so we, we passed out. We went up to the battalion lines, which was just over the road, and there was a rear party there while we were waiting for our flights to go to Belize. And was there for about a week. And there was a guy. He kind of took us under his wing, and it was a big old guy he'd called been Benny. In the Falklands. Yeah, been in the Falklands. So he got through. Great that. soldier. Yeah, been through all the Falklands. And basically, he was in charge of the rear party because he was getting out of the army. He was he was finishing. But he was doing one last trip out to Belize. He was going to come out for the last couple of months or last three months. So he took us under our wing and we really liked him because that's the first time anybody really spoke to us as opposed to speaking at us. Yeah. yeah. And he was a real good guy. And anyway, so we went off to Belize and I remember him saying he's coming out. I'd been in Belize about a month and a half. So I was starting to feel like I was part of the unit then. And the alarm bells went off on the camp, which means there's an emergency. Somebody's killed or generally. Mm -hmm. And it was. And so I remember I was stood near the pool overlooking the landing zone, which was a football pitch. So the helicopter came in. And as the helicopter came in, the guys, the medics run over there and pulled out this body on, on the thing. And I just saw it, it was Benny. Very, and he was, like I say, he just, the whole world just collapsed. I was like, what? This is real shit. You know, he, and I just, everything's going through my head. He, he's just come out to get some money because he's getting married. He's leaving the army. It was just awful. It was terrible. And he was, he was a real... That realisation. Yeah. 
This ain't yeah. a game no more. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. This I is mean, not I, a game. This I is sort real. of experienced that for my first trip out in Afghanistan. Yeah. Someone actually died before we'd actually even left Bastion. Yeah. Negligent discharge. Dead. Wow. And, um, and you go, well, he was, I just saw him. Yeah. Two hours ago. No, now no more. Yeah. And, that it's, even though you you know it is isn't it I mean yeah. it's, I mean it's different if you're actually a true soldier a real soldier but just being attached to and watching the effect that has yeah. on everybody yeah it did even I mean, though you know you you, you sort of saying I am a soldier I am in an elite regiment I will be I will be called upon yeah. to if I do my job to kill people and yeah. to watch my comrades probably die around yeah. me when someone actually does die the reality is different yeah it's it? just oh my god yeah it's just well, it, it ain't like it is in the movies that's for sure. Yeah. It's not me. And I don't care how big and tough you are. It, it, it brings you down. You're like, wow, that could be me. Hmm? <laughs> Quite possibly. Will yeah. be me. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, Particularly considering the career path that you took. Mm. So let, let's go Let's go back personal now. So you've got a girlfriend. Yeah. You're now back at Aldershot. Yeah. And yeah. You, you come back from Belize into, back to Aldershot. Yeah. And yeah. Northern yeah. Ireland... Yeah, then the troubles. No, we went to Cyprus after that. Cyprus on a, a UN tour. Yeah, which you which, thought was going to be a holiday. Oh yeah, I couldn't believe it. My dad was out in Cyprus for a bit as well. Yeah, he, <laughs> well, he didn't have a holiday either. This is eighty six. Well, it, it was. It was supposed to be, you know, a bit of a sort of sunshine place, sunshine holiday, at work, but play as well. It still is for some people. Yeah, it weren't well, for us. <laughs> we literally got there, and I think the day we got there, the day after, the PLO attacked. Akatiri with uh, RPG sevens. Right. There was a, a soldier shot on the main road outside our barrack. Oh, everything hit the, fa- hit, hit the roof. Like people you know. seem to have forgotten about that. Yeah, as well, I know. That I know. conflict. I, I don't know. It's it just swept under the carpet and forgotten about. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, so it was full on. It was like being in Northern Ireland, but in a odd, odd place, which was you know it was hard work, mm. and it was uh, dangerous at times, but good. But you're doing patrols. Yeah, I'm doing patrols, vehicle stops, just like in Northern Ireland. OPs watching for boats coming in because weapons were coming in from the sea, you know, across from Turkey or wherever they were coming from. Mm. Yeah, so it was just full on. <laughs> but again, I, I loved it. It was great. I wouldn't mind if get down to the beach now and again, but this is all right. I could see it from a distance. <laughs> Do you think your, your superiors at that point saw something in you that was different to, to some of the other guys? Yes, yeah, they do. I mean, because you, been... you, you passed out as, as best. Yeah, champion recruit. Yeah. You're the crow. Yeah. 83 was it? 84. 84. Yeah. Uh, then you move your way up to the front of the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you then you start running patrols, right? Yeah, By the time right. you get to Cyprus. Yeah, that's right. When did you get your, did you get Lance? Yeah, I was a Lance, Lance Corporal in Cyprus. Um, was I a Lance Corporal? Yeah, I was. I was a Lance Corporal for Cyprus. I was like a... a a two IC of a section, you know, mm-hmm. I, I was in charge of four blogs by now. Second in command. Yeah, second yeah. in command, which was great. And like I say, and I was, I was always, I want to be there next and I want to be there next. I knew where I wanted to go. I knew what I wanted, you know, but I weren't. Had, had the word SAS actually raised itself inside Cyprus, your consciousness? Think, yeah. Cyprus, you know, some of the guys were, the older guys were talking about going on selection and doing it. does it. stand for Super Army Soldier, doesn't it? <laughs> it does now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the go, go on, so, so you, you're, yeah. you're conscious of a sandberry rather than a red yeah. berry now, yeah? Yeah. I mean, the parachute regiment was fantastic, great soldiering, but operationally, you know, everyone knew the regiment, the SAS, were out there doing it all the, all time. the time. All the time, yeah. And I thought, that's where I've got to go. I want to prove myself here, you know, and then I want to take it to the next level. And the next level was... You know, it's like, it, it, it was just something I, I didn't, I had to do. I wanted to do. I've got so, to do this. So is this, so here's a question for you. Yeah. Is it about the camaraderie, the friendship? Is it about doing it for queen and country? Or is it for you about showing everybody that you're the best or one of the best? No. Or I is it a mixture of all those It's things? a mixture of all of it. I, I, I'm all for queen and country. I'm, I love it. I really am. I'm very patriotic. Same here. Yeah. And... I love the camaraderie and the, the, it is a family. Like I say, losing Benny for the first time, that it was like losing, again, my dad or my mm, brother. Mm. He was family now. He weren't just a bloke I know. He was family. He'd, he'd have my back like I'd have his, I'd have his back. Now he's mm. gone. So the reality of all that, but yeah, it's, that camaraderie is, it's just second to none. It really but is. But there's a conflict, isn't it? It's about the camaraderie, but also each time you went P company, you know, you're getting rapidly yeah. promoted quicker than other people. Maybe people have been there longer. Mm. And you're on a kind of like quite a rapid yeah. rise. And I weren't, I, I weren't. Was was that self-driven? Was yeah. that? It, it was, you know, I, 
I'm a team player. I'm not one of these. Yeah, I no, just no, want to be. That's, that's the whole point that you join, yeah, right? Yeah, but absolutely. Also at the same point, you want to be at point, don't you? Yeah, I want. I want to prove myself. I want. To, can I make those decisions? Can I be the one to get in there and do that? And I wanted to do it. That's why the regiment was in, in my sights by mm. then. I thought, I've got to do this. I've got to get out there and prove myself to the next level. The next level would have been because I didn't really know what. No one really knew what the regiment was doing. They knew they're doing something. They're around. They're always there slapping naughty people somewhere. So mm. I thought, I want to get out there and do that. So, yeah, so I was starting to think of it back in Cyprus and some of the guys were going on selection. Then I looked at, I think about eight guys from the battalion went on selection, only one got through. I thought, and, and these were fit guys. I was looking mm. at them, judging myself by them, thinking, well, if they can't get through, I can't get through. But that's where, again, I think, well, I won't know unless I try, and I'm going to try. And it was a, a repeat sort of performance from when I joined in 83, when I joined, went on selection. Same thing, there was 280 of us, 283 of us. 283 yeah. and how many actually make it seven yeah <laughs> i know we lost 80 on day two eight zero on the fan dance part of it a fan dance being the penny fan right yeah. which is one of the biggest yeah. mountains in the black mountains that's, that's right. right it's the biggest one yeah yeah, yeah. and what 50 percent go on that one yeah. day yeah but now part of it is about navigation mm. yeah but a lot of it is about your ability mm. to take pain yeah. I would suggest endurance and endurance and the mm. ability to go further, yep. which you always say, yeah. And obviously, mm. a lot of them, fifty percent, didn't have that then, no. right? But can I just say, I, I think <laughs> all the way through your book yep. is about the fact that you go further, but in order to go further, you have to endure, endure discomfort, yeah. pain, whether it be mental or physical. Yeah. What is it like falling into a vat of caustic soda, which is used to strip metal? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I had to talk <laughs> about this, and this is before you were ever in yeah, the army. This yeah. is before you know, I was you're a young lad, right? I was working on a night shift illegally. And how I, old? I was nearly 16, 15, just before I joined the army. So you should. That's why. That's why I couldn't get in the army because first, I, because I got in, yeah because of the injuries. So just out of interest, how do you fall into a vat? So what happened was I was working the night shift yeah. and what you do- was, What was the factory? It was electroplating. Uh, it's closed now actually. Um, RJ Glaze. And funny old thing, my dad had worked there 20 years before. Really? Yeah. So what the way it works is you've got these vats, which is like- How big are they? About six foot, six, seven foot. And in the it, each one's got a different- um, Type uh, of acid or yeah, something. Acid or, or alkali. water or alkaline or yeah, yeah. Uh, caustic soda, etc. So you put the raw metal in and strip it down and then you put and then it becomes out the other end. It's using the manufacture of aluminium, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean literally it melts stuff. Yeah, it does, yeah. It melts rust Every off metal. So yeah. It, what's it do what's it do to flesh and bone then? Oh Jesus Christ, I tell you. I so I I basically use a crane to move the stuff up and down so and I'd I'd misjudged it. It's a you stood on a, a crane platform. So this is the vat here. Yeah, yeah. You stood on this crane here and you pick the work up, the on a jig, bring it you along. Slide it across, drop, drop it, it in. down, in there for ten minutes, up, up into the next and so forth. Right. And I misjudged it on the caustic soda. It hit the side and, and bounced off. So I had to now climb up on top to realign it. And that's what I did. So I stood up on top and at the time I remember it was about one o'clock in the morning or something. No one else is in the factory. The, the other guy who was working with me had gone to the toilet or something. So, and that's why, I, so I remember there's no one else there. Carl, Carl, his name was. I thought, right, I better get this done. So I climb up on the top in these Wellington boots and dungarees things. I'm trying to get it on. As, as I'm doing it, I slip. And I went into both feet to, together it, in, into the caustic soda. And really, I should have just gone straight down. To this day, I don't know. It must have been the pain. So as, as it got past my Wellingtons, obviously it all went inside. And I just sort of backflipped. And as I'm sort of coming up off the top of the, the jig towards yeah. the floor, yeah. Carl grabs me. He's there. Yeah, he's there. If you hadn't been there. I'd, I'd have hit the floor. I mean, I'd, I'd, I guess I'd have been all right. I'd probably crack my skull open. So he catches me and runs me straight down to the tap. You. Turns the tap on and pulls the wellies off. And as he's pulling the wellies off, literally my skin just drops out with it. And it just... It's just, it you're just, melting. Yeah, now I can feel the pain. It was like, you know that when you get kicked in the balls and you get that... <laughs> Yeah, really. it was like that. It was but that. Oh, it was. It was excruciating. Burn, burn for pain, me yeah. has to be. Yeah. And I've met some guys who suffered some awful, awful mm. burns. I mean, that has. To, I mean, you burn your finger. Yeah, like you know that hurts. Yeah. That kind of burn. Oh, so from just down below the knees, it just basically took all the all skin, skin off. off. Yeah, and then between the Achilles and, and the back of my, my leg, there it just went straight into a hole, both sides. So the, we tipping all this water, getting all this water, and then and I end up getting taken down to the hospital and dealt with there but that's why I couldn't get in the How military bad with the burns 
really bad. I mean, you couldn't really. Bad. You no, couldn't, I was. I think I was in hospital for about three or four days because they, they had to keep diluting it um, with this, these, with these other chemicals because it was still burning. Still and active, then, yeah. And then still they just padded burning. out all the holes and then just sort of rebuilt it over. I think it took nearly twelve months. Yeah, to heal. Yeah. And well, to heal enough to allow me go, to go in the army. Yeah. And then obviously I had to start training in between that. So it was it was a tough time. But yeah, it was horrible. It was horrendous. And, and I, honestly, I mean, I do not know how... I'd have not flipped out of it. I'd have been gone in seconds. Well, that's what you, oh, you get yeah. rid of bodies, actually. You yeah, drop them exactly. in vats, of course, <laughs> exploder. I can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, moving swiftly back now. Mm. Let's fast forward. Yeah. As you can. I mean, quite an amazing uh, trajectory in terms of your career, A, at three para, but now you've got your sights set on becoming yeah. a member of the well, the most elite regiment in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Still known to be that. They are that. They're exactly that. I do. I talk about I mean, about when you look at, so if you look at the Americans, and I've spent time out in yeah. places where I've bumped into SF from all yeah. sorts of different places. I mean, the numbers that they have, Delta, yeah. uh, SEALs, etc., are massive in comparison. Yeah. I mean, I don't forget going out with, I was out with the American Marines out in Musicana. I've been out with with four, five, no, but five Scots and one Royal Irish the year before. The one thing that you talk about, and I'm digressing slightly, but the ability of a, of, of, of a British soldier, particularly from uh, the elite, the elite yeah. regiments, is the ability to cope with very little and do very much. Yeah. Whereas I think the U.S. Marine Corps has more planes, more ships, and more men than the entire yep. Navy, Air Force, and Army of the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah, Do you yeah. think, so that ability to adapt and survive or adapt and overcome, is that the ethos of the British Army because Absolutely, we are yeah. small and because we haven't got very much money? It's exactly that, and it makes us what we are, you know, because you you, you've got to come up with solutions now. It's not there on a play for you. You haven't got the technology. You've you haven't got, got the to numbers. Find. Yeah. You don't take we things head numbers. on, right? No, exactly. And it, you know we've got. And the reason the, we, the, I love the fact that the Marine, American Marines, we are the bra we are the f the brave and the few. I'm going, mate. You you're no bigger few. than my country. You certainly ain't the few, exactly. and you've got more things to play with than we've got to play with. Yeah, I mean. We are such such a small unit. And no like disrespect to US Marine Corps, by the way, here. I'm not looking to get filled in next time I turn out <laughs> in the, up in America. No, they're great. They're a great unit. Um, but fantastic. Yeah. We're just, you know, we've got a lot of history and we, we, we you know, we're all about art and minds and coming up with uh, thinking outside of the box. Mm. Every one of us is a thinking soldier, you know, not to say that soldiers are not, but we really have to come up with solutions to, to do sometimes what seems because impossible. Of, because of just the yeah, numbers. We're outnumbered. We haven't got the kit, you know, it's very dangerous most of the time so mm. you've got to think come, up, come up yeah come up with an idea and a, a way of getting and it won't mm. be conventional that's for sure mm. you just got to come up with, with something to make it happen and we do we've been you know very fortunate I've been on a lot of operations and we've never failed so unbelievable and 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 there's actually when I say I've met other other Special Forces yeah. guys from other countries, they there is only one mm -hmm. that they refer to as the best, and, yeah. it, and it is the one that you served in for 23, 24 years, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And we are the best. I mean, it's I've worked with the Americans, I've worked with the Germans, I've worked with the French, I've worked with the Russians, you know, and we're, we're, we're in a different league, 100%. Why? Why? Because our, our mentality, and, and again, the lack of kit, the lack of resources, and we just go out there and make it happen. We, we're a lot tougher in many ways. Um, and we just, I, I don't know, we just we just always seem to get the results, and we do. We just work great as a team, we work great as individuals, and yeah, there's something different about us for sure. So there you are doing the fan dance, 50% yeah. are dropped out yeah. in, on the second day. Yeah. 80 How does it whittle itself down after that? Pretty sharpish over the. I mean, the first phase is the we call it the hills over the Black Mountains, uh, where you start start off in small groups of four, then into twos. Then you're. You this know, was like, a winter. This was winter yeah, selection. Winter, yeah. There's two, isn't there? Summer and, yeah. and winter. Would you say one's better than the other? I uh, <laughs> no, they're both. No. <laughs> they're, they're, they've all got the pros and cons, you know. The winter, it's frigging freezing, of course, but it's it it gets to to move faster for me. You know, I want to yeah. keep warm, so I'll go quicker. The summer, you, know, you can have the opposite effect in the summer. You know, it can be too hot. So uh, dehydrate. Yeah, they're both far. They're, they're as hard as each other, but just for different reasons. But yeah. Also, it doesn't help if you need to drown yourself, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Jesus Christ, mate. That was an embarrassing moment as well. <laughs> How's it? It's not embarrassing, mate. You're just trying to you're trying to avoid doing a click here and a click there to yeah. get across, which yeah. is thinking out of the box, which is what you're supposed to do, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. It doesn't help, though, when the, if you lose your <laughs> rifle, though, does it, in a river? <laughs> That's the How cold was it? Mate, it was frigging breathtaking, absolutely freezing. And I uh, fell into a river once in Alaska, yeah. right? Doing a photo shoot for Hello Magazine. It's just like being going for selection. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I did actually end up living on my own in the bivouac for about uh, 11 days. But That's a pass I, a low magazine came out, took a picture of me. And he's going, just move a little bit closer. Just move a little bit closer. Straight through the ice, mate. Ooh. And do you know what? Tom and Jerry moment. Because he literally do. It's that cold. Yeah. It goes up. You feel it coming yeah. up your body, don't you? It's like, yeah. ding, I'm an ice cube. <laughs> anyway, but I didn't have a rifle yeah. and I wasn't up for selection. So you are literally, you're not trying to get yeah. across it now. You're actually trying to yeah, into the water to get my You're trawling rifle. to try yeah. and find your rifle. Yeah. I was just, I literally just started off and the mist, you could not see your hand in front of your face. And obviously done the map study and I thought, I ain't going to go right because there's another click. I'm going to go straight for the river. Is it drifting? You're drifting away yeah. from where you dropped your rifle. Your yeah. rifle isn't going to move like you're going to move, no, right? I know. I know. I'm, so I'm, I'm there in the water with Bergen weighing about 80 pound or something. something now, ridiculous. Weighing, now weighing considerably more because yeah, it's full of Twice because it's now soaking wet as well. And I'm soaking wet. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I'm trying to find the weapon under the water. How far were you through selection at this point? This was on test week. So it was the last week of so all of you've been one. through. Yeah, yeah, this was the it last. Could have week. all gone. Yeah, I could have lost everything. I know I'd gone back to that vehicle with no weapon. That you're done. You're finished. Or had I've gone down, which I nearly did on that time actually. Really? Yeah. Was that the closest you came to going down? Yeah, it, it, it was one of those moments where you're hypothermic. Yeah, and it felt like Mike Tyson had run along the side of me and just smacked me in the head. Mm. And it, I was very fortunate because I, I can remember it as clear as day. I was one of the fittest on selection. And, and basically, if, you, if you're a fit runner or, you know, doing well, they'd set you off at the back because they want all the slow ones over the mountains first, like, you know. So I was right at the very back. And then um, I'd gone through this water. Even though you've got to make the same checkpoints at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still, because you've been timed as an individual. Individual, all right. Yeah, so it's, you, you've been. But they just wanted to make sure that they yeah. all came in before it got dark, yeah. basically. Yeah, exactly. So I was always at the back. And on this particular day, I, w I was right at the back. I was the last one to go. And uh, anyway, I ended up in that drama. Got did you have any indication? Wet. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. did you have any indication at that point, from at any point? Because you make the point in the book, and I've heard it before for, for, for people that I've known who've mm. made it into the regiment, was it's very different from, from the yeah. army. It's no shouting and screaming, no. go, 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 go. It's, it's yeah. up, entirely up to you yep. whether you want to complete this or not. And that's the odd thing. That's the odd It's that self-motivation. There's no uh, encouragement and no decouragement. So you don't know. You never know. On on the ills phase, you you do know because you know your timings. Right. But However, on some of the tabs, you, you're not allowed watches for whatever reason. But, you know, so, um, yeah, so you, you've got a good indication. The, you're the, doing all right. Did, 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 did you have any indication at that point where you were? Where I was. I was doing. Yeah, yeah no, I knew. I knew I was doing okay. And again, because I was at the back. Mm. I was being set off the back, so they knew I was a strong You're doing all right. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Then all of a sudden, it's gone. Yeah. The plan's gone. <sighs> Tits up completely. Because I was, it was about 28 Ks, I think, this particular day. 28 Ks. Yeah. And I was just, just about- A 200 pound pack and a rifle. I'm now on top of a massive feature and I'm looking down and the guy who set off just before me, I'd overtaken him. Um, he was, again, a fa one of the faster runners. We'd overtaken everybody else. We'd already got in front of everybody. Did he and, pass? Yeah, he did. So he's, he's I'm, I'm coming down towards this checkpoint and I, I considered four turn on the road. I thought, right, well, that's, that's a trick the map. Yeah, that's it's definitely a the checkpoint. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the last one because you never tell you how far you're going. Then you just get given the next grid. Oh, I know this was the painful thing for me. That's the thing about what makes you different, yeah. isn't it? It's because you never know when it's going to exactly. end. You don't. You're not told how long the march is. So you've or got to have a go. mindset that there is no end yeah, to this. Just keep hell, going. Keep basically. going. Yeah, yeah. Go that bit further. Again. So I'm looking down and I can see the checkpoint. It's only it's about 800 meters, 900 meters away off the mountain. And at the time, the guy who was behind me just comes up level with me and then carries on. And as I, as I go to walk off, all of a sudden I felt like I'd just been smacked in the side of the head. I'm going, I'm falling, I'm stumbling all over the place. I'm Hy starting to shake. Hypothermic. Yeah. I'm going, and, I'm, and anyway, the guy in front of me, Andy, came back. He goes, you all right? I goes, Andy, you better it's hyper, go. It's hypothermia. Yeah, yeah, hypothermia, basically. Long story short, I eventually staggered all the way down to the truck and I could see the DS watching me. And as I get to him, I'm thinking, I'm done. I can't go any further. I'm fucked. I'm absolutely out of it. And I get to him and he goes, um, are you okay? And I went, I don't think so. And he went, get on the back of the four-tonner. That's it. I thought, that's it, I'm done. 
what After he didn't tell that. me. Yeah, it wasn't. That was the last checkpoint. Thank. I know, but I didn't. What time did you realise? Well, when, when I got on the truck, Andy was on there. I thought, well, what happened to him? And then he goes, no, this is definitely the last one. I was like, thank fuck for that. Yeah, because I was, I was, I was, I was going down. Yeah, I was just going into a freaking coma virtually. Had you, had you failed selection at that point? Had there been another checkpoint, mm. would you have tried again? I always say no, I wouldn't go again, but I don't know. If I'm honest, I think it's in you to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, oh, no. so, 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 crawling. So, so you, you actually, mm. you, you get through that bit. Yeah. When do you find out you're actually in? Um, you then do that. Then once you've passed the hills, which was left. Do you interrogation, about, don't you? you do that's that. right at the very end. The next phase is the jungle. That's really selection. That's what selection is really about. Is it? Oh, yeah. What, it's what makes brutal. that? What makes that so different? It's like doing. Than, it's like than, than doing what you did. I'll tell you what. It's Please. like it's like doing uh, um, the hills phase again, the Black Mountains inside the jungle, inside a canopy in that humor with more weight. And also, no disrespect, but and I'm no map reader, but you've got a fair yeah, idea different. of where you're going if you're in open open yeah. hills, right? You yeah. suddenly get in a canopy where you can't see more than mm -hmm. ten meters, and you've got to navigate yourself through that. It's hard. You, you literally count every step. Are you, are you step. on your own again? Are you in groups of four or what? No, you're doing patrols now. You're in a patrol of, you start with, a, if, depending on how many, I think there was about 26 of us got started in jungle, or maybe 30, something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers. So they put you in patrols of six six or eight. All right. And you have one DS assigned to, and then as people fall, staff. by the way. Yeah. One, yeah, one staff. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just physically and mentally full on all the time. You know, like I say, navigating, carrying the kit, patrolling, surviving, doing right. a task that they're teaching. Just, just surviving in the jungle yeah. is hard enough. Mm -hmm. Water, keeping yourself clean, yeah. not getting bitten, oh, you not get, getting you get bit. And I say bit, I don't mean just by mosquitoes and by insects. Leeches. I mean snakes, leeches. Is, you're covered in leeches all the time. And oh, it starts mate. off, you start off, I know, but it's on covers and then in the end you're like, can't be bothered with it. They're everywhere. Hanging off your balls. Have, and, have, have, have a drink. Have a drink on yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Just let them fill up and pop. You get yeah. up in the morning, like you get your dry kit on. You get up in the morning, it looks like you've been shot with a shotgun. There's, There's a three blood blood off Because yeah, yeah. they've filled up and then dropped off. Yeah. Or you've rolled over and popped them, you know, squashed oh, it. Oh, nice. A little <laughs> bit of them still stuck inside you, giving <laughs> us infection. Yeah. Oh, horrible. I mean, you do, you spend, you get, you get out as soon as it gets dark. But you know. did you ever question, why am I doing this? I enjoyed it. I don't know it sounds weird. I loved no, it. No, 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 no. I get it. I, no, I, I, don't. I don't know. I'd enjoy it as much as you. But I understand <laughs> yeah. the achievement, the, the being out there. Being the best mm. of the best, yeah, that's something that not many people ever will mm -hmm. ever achieve. And the history uh, yeah. of the regiment speaks for itself in terms of globally. You know, it's probably the SF brand, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's exactly that. So if you did say the jungle was that's that was yeah. it. So how many people failed that? Um, I think I like to say it's twenty seven. Let's say thirty of us went in. I think ten of us, no, nine of us came out. No, again, yeah, they've gone the through end. all that. Yeah, they? yeah. And you've still got another face. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got, after you finish that, you, then you've got uh, resistance, uh, escape and evasion, resistance to interrogation, where you go on the run. Yeah. Well, know. they dress you up in an old grey yeah. green coat and yeah. well, no boots. Two stuff and, yeah. Which is horrible. Was it? <laughs> oh, it's horrible, yeah. What's no, the worst bit? What's it just And then again, it was freezing cold when we were doing it, you know, so... You so you've go you gone out to the jungle and then they fly yeah. you back yeah, to the Black Mountains. And then yeah. you're back on the Black... Well, ours was actually over part of the Black Mountains, but yeah. he, he's all up in Scotland or it could be in Anywhere. Wales or... Right. Yeah. Somewhere that's not nice, yeah, basically. definitely not nice. Yeah. Soaking wet and these grey coats, you know, the way... Weigh a ton and rubbing against you all the time and... Trying and you're being to chased to, down, right? Yeah, being chased with dogs, helicopters, Land Rovers, people... And the people that are pursuing you are also people. Military. That, but, but they're not going to be in the regiment, are they? They're, they're not regiment. And they want to catch you. They, they want to catch you. you. Yeah, they want to catch you badly, you do a good they? hiding, yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It's fun, to be honest. It's, it's quite scary. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but, it, but it, it, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. But it is. I mean, looking back... What was, it, it, what was the interrogation bit like? I hated it. Absolutely hated it. I mean, the thing is, I knew it was a game. I knew they couldn't kill me. Reality... You probably are going to get killed, but I mean, yeah. so I knew no matter what they did to me, I ain't going to talk. I'm not going to play that game. But mm. towards the end, because we do 36 hours of interrogation, you know, what you see on the show is like 12 hours. I think they do. Yeah. We do 36 hours. It's a long old time. The stress positions absolutely kill you. You know, you're just in a, being yeah. held back muscles yeah. getting spasm. I mean, yeah. if you just try and you just stand up straight and put your arms out, leave them out and say, oh, I'm going to do that. It's horrible, isn't it? 
So you get 36 hours of that. The interrogation part is actually a relief. Because, you, you know, in my head, I knew I'm not going to talk. And it's just a game. I'm just going to play play the game with him. But towards the end, I was so exhausted. I was um, Tired, hallucinating. Sleep dip. Yeah. I was hallucinating. And I remember it. Just like you're sat there now, being dragged into the room, made to strip off to humiliate you. you yeah, know? yeah. So it didn't bother me. I'm stood there, like, looking at him. And as I'm looking at you, all of a sudden, I'm like this. Shit. You were in a bath. You sat in a bath. <laughs> In my head, I'm going, what's just happened to me? What's going you on? Just and start yeah, going yeah. into Getting a panic. Getting deja vu time. Yeah. Getting out. Get your Stop. brain starts playing tricks on you. Yeah? And just you're, and he was a big bloke as well. Big ginger bloke. And he's horrible. And he's looking at me and he's going, but talking to me really soft. What's your name? What's your number? What's your name? Oh, Jesus Christ. What did, what did I just do? You know, yeah. and I just went into a panic and thinking, my head starts spinning. Think, did I, have I said something? Have, have I spoke? Have I, get, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, so I... Luckily, again, that was towards the end of it. It's the last couple of hours, so I managed to hang in there. <laughs> but it's, oh, it's horrible. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be asked. No. Like, I think I could ever do anything close to it. No. Um, so then, you, then, you, then you're in. Yeah. Like, how do you find out? It's, it, it, is, there's is no, it really anticlimactic? Absolutely, anticlimactic? Yeah. yeah, it is. After all that. Yeah. Go on. What it, it is, but it isn't. You know, you, you're basically going to... You get back to Hereford, you do the last few sort of administrational things do you know? you have to do. You've got an inkling? Yeah, you, you, you know you by know. then. You know, by the, by the end of um, combat survival, you're told, okay, you guys are... I mean, you're on probation. You're going to probation for a year. So you can still be binned, and people have. You know, you go to the regiment, because that's really just the start. You, 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 what they're saying there is, you're not, you haven't, you've passed the selection to see if you can do special forces stuff now. That's all it is. The special forces bit starts when you get to the squadron. So you're on a year's probation. You've still got to prove yourself. And if, if you mess up there, then you're gone. And, it, and people do get... Oh, can you imagine that? Oh, yeah, I know. After you've done all that. And it's I'd a different that, world. You'd have to leave. You couldn't go back to your regiment, could you, after no. that? No, no, it, it's the end of the Sorry, road. That's what I'm saying. That, what do I know? But Many be, people do. I don't think I could. I, I think that would have been it for me. I've been, pff, I'm done. But Or maybe I would have gone back. I don't know. But um, yeah, so this new world opens up. And it is totally different. I know you can't go into too much detail, but what yeah. are the major differences? Um, there's no saluting, is there? No, there's no rank. There is rank, but we don't use rank. Yeah. Everybody's first names. You know, you've got blokes with long hair, blokes with short hair, blokes with tashes, blokes with all sorts. It's just a mismatch. And you look around and if I said to anybody, right, what's your image of an SAS guy? People go six foot six, V-shaped, mm. nothing like that. There's a little bloke there with a pop belly. There's this, that, and we're just a total mismatch. And that's why they do so well, because it's because not what you expect. Particularly covert, right? Yeah. yeah. And that little bloke with a pop belly will probably run you ragged for 48 hours yeah, nonstop. Yeah, 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 Unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just different. But what we were doing was different. It was real. This is all real. This is strategic level stuff now. We are going to do this in London. We're going to go and do this in Europe. We're somewhere, plant, place in the world I've never heard of. You're like, geez. And you're expected from the word go to be part of that team. And I'll give you an example, like um, a task will come in, say an hostage rescue in some faraway land, come in and go right into ours, but it's going to go, right, guys, you're on the team. And we'll all just sat around the table like this. How are we going to do this then? Let's have a look at this. And we, Billy, look, as a new guy, Billy, what do you think? And you're like, well, mm. uh, you know, because you, everyone's got something to co contribute. So every, it's like a, a Chinese parliament will take all the bits and pieces and then me as a sergeant major or whoever's in leading I'll go okay guys this is what we're going to do and then start putting the plan together and this is how it's going to happen and it was just this new world I was like wow this is different and then you're off and you're doing it really what about what about the toll on your family it's hard you, need, you know you need a, a strong family to, to, to well so many I know well from chat Mm. people that I've met that not many relationships survive. Not the no. first not the first marriage that no. happened when yeah. you were in the originally started in the army. Yeah. No, they don't make the relationships do take a take a battering. You live this different life as well, you know, because you're away all the time in operations. Half the time you can't say where you're going. You don't know how long you'd be gone for. I remember being told being and called And there is a chance that you may not be coming back a, or a if good you chance. do come back, you yeah. might be coming back missing bits. Yeah. There is, mate, yeah. I mean that's real and that's what it is so it's it's tough it's tough for the, the families you know and the people that deserve the pat on the back of them for putting up with us and putting up with what, what they've had to do it's interesting that's in the book and it's not the first time I've heard it from someone who served in the same regiment mm. as you is you get back and someone says 
the dishwasher isn't working, oh, yeah. the tiles need putting up in the shower. And, 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 and even in my own little way, I have experienced that when yeah. I used to go away to Afghan. I used to go for a month, mate. It's nothing yeah. compared to what the guys are doing. Yeah. But you come back and you go, I just want to go into a bar and get absolutely yeah. pie-eyed. Yeah, and leave me alone, and then I'm ready. Give me two days mm. to just decompress, and then I'm ready to put. Yeah. Do not as soon as you come through the door, yeah. this, that, this, that, and this, and you think, well, actually, I've just been off. Yeah, where well, the only thing I really had to concentrate on was the job in hand, which is yeah. relatively simplistic for me. It was make sure I saw the sun come up the next morning, mm. and then nothing compared to what you do, right? Mm. But but that, that is a con that's a conflict, isn't it? Yeah, because it is. really. They're there on their own. And particularly in your, you, and one thing you mentioned, I think is really important yeah. that a lot of people don't understand is you're not getting paid that much. No, you're not. It's not about I mean, the you money. Compare, what was your comparison in terms of as a sergeant major yeah. in the regiment and the sergeant major as a para? What's the difference? Yeah, it's about over, over a month, it's about a grand and a half difference, maybe two grand. It's easily spent, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. It's well spent. I mean, we'll never... Well, like everything. You always live according to yeah. your means, don't you? And having a family as well. You know, I was never not overdrawn in, when I was in, in the regiment. But I, it wasn't about that. I didn't care. You know, obviously, the, that's where the family has to struggle. They, they sort that out. I was being taken care of, getting me to where I need to be, then I'm going to go and do my job. And it's, you become very selfish. And then when you come back, like you say, we, we never got time to decompress, and it was wrong. You're going straight into exactly that, the dishwasher or this, and, I, and I'd be like, do you know where I've just... Freaking, obviously, oh, you didn't know where I've been. Yeah, you don't know, and I can't probably I tell know, you, right? You know, there's people on the street, blah, 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 you know, and I'd just go into one. And the kids would be sat there going, oh, here we go again. That, it yeah. comes that man, that, that angry man back again. Yeah. It was hard, it was difficult, you know, looking back Not on saying me. you were, but I mean, no. that's, that. There was, the kids would, the kids would be sat at the table waiting for dinner, and they'd be looking at me and her and thinking, Is, are they going to be happy? Are they going to kick off? And it was minutes. sad, it was, it was, it was difficult. But we did, it, you know, you take it out on the families, and hence the reason, you know, a lot of them, don't make it. It's it's just again, it's been sorted out now. I think there's a lot more sort of um, welfare with the regiment, and you know the blokes do get chance to decompress. I believe we we didn't. It was just full on. We literally come back. You'd, you could be at home. I, I remember one time I'd been away a particular place, and it was pretty dodgy and pretty full on. Came back. I was actually sat in the bath. My pager went off, and I was like, shit. And she looked at me and went, "You better be kidding." I went. I've got to go. I literally went into camp and I got the classic, oh, it's all right, you know, you're going to go go back home, come back in tomorrow, but you're going to be away for a couple of weeks. Five months later, I came back. Five months? Yeah. Well, five and a half months later, I came back. That was during the, the Bosnia campaign because no one knew how it was going to go and what was going to go on, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was that classic two weeks. You and so-and-so were going to go out as advanced for, for a couple of weeks, then you'll be back and then we may all go back out. Straight out then. Straight, that was it. So that was tough. We and, were, and, and the relationship didn't survive. Right? No, no, it didn't. No. And again, like I say, you become selfish. You, it, there was times I'd come back of an operation and I didn't have to go on the next one or I didn't have to, but I, I wanted to. I didn't want to miss anything. We're all the same. We all wanted it. So you would actually but volunteer did you, did for you more not, stuff. But, you, but did you not feel because of, well, because of who you are? So yeah. Just no disrespect, quite exceptional human being. Did you, you were now getting promoted through the regiment. Mm. Did you know? And, I, and I'll be right, and I don't want to say I say the wrong thing, but officers often will come in for a period of yeah. time, a short period of time, and leave. It's the guys that are the, Full the on. S S yeah. NCOs, senior NCOs. They're mm. the ones that are there all the time. Yeah. They're the ones that do the twenty-five years. Yeah. They're the ones that go through the doors, and mm -hmm. they're the ones that do the killing. Yeah. Sorry. That's what. That, yeah. It's that's fact, exactly. It? That's how it is. Yeah. And what you get is, you know, you get a new CO come in and he, he obviously, he's only got two years. He wants as much as he can in those two years. Well, he's got, he's and I'm, we're getting dragged along it. He's got, he's got his own yeah. train set, hasn't he? Yeah. He's the, he's the new owner and of then, the train set and he wants, he's a big fat controller and he wants exactly to do what it. to do. And that's how I describe it. The, the regiment is a crazy train, travels at a thousand miles a, a, an hour across the, the globe, doing an unbelievable things. You get on it, you get off, sort out problem, get back on it and keep going. That's it. And you just keep going until eventually you walk that's out the 25 game. years yeah. of your life, sir. Yeah. I know. I mean, and it goes like, I can, you know, from doing selection, I can see it as clear as day, but it's just all that in between. And then it's quite weird because I find myself, I'm talking to somebody and I feel, hang on, I've done that. I've seen that. I've had, I've, and I've done all these things myself. I, that's why when I was writing the book it was great for me. Going, I'm thinking, thinking hell, yeah, I've done a lot. And there's a quarter of what I've done in there. No, but you yeah. can't talk about that. I know, I know. But I mean, it's just crazy how 
how much you you fill in and how much you do in that period of twenty five years. How do you feel after you know you are one of the old school now? Let's yeah. put it that way, right? Mm-hmm. How do you feel about some of the young school talking openly about being on the ground? I mean, it should never happen. To to be fair, I mean, um, it doesn't happen that much. No, it doesn't. And. Generally, if somebody's told, well, from what I've seen, but if someone has been talking about something, it's it's out in the domain anyway. Well, it, what the problem is, it's admitting to it, to saying the regiment's there. That's what the regiment doesn't like. And anybody who's talking, especially if you're talking about operational stuff, I mean, that's... that's You're giving up that's, stuff. Yeah, that's bad. I mean, that's bad. You're putting people's lives at risk, you know, because mm. a lot of the stuff we still use, the methods are still being used, or there's operations still ongoing. And with the way the world is today, you know, you've got to be very careful what you're saying and who you're saying it to because, you know, look at the stuff that's happening with Northern Ireland right now. Mm. You know, people being dragged over the coals for all sorts of stuff. Mm. So it's it's a dangerous world. You've got to be very, very careful. And I, I don't talk about anything I was going to talk about anyway is in the domain. It's been, mm. you know, it's well documented, but no, nah. I, I don't talk about the, the regiment stuff on my talks and stuff. I just give a, an but overview you, of what life was like, like we're talking now and this sort of thing. Right. Yeah. But 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 your view on people that do do yeah. that is it's not good. No. no. So let's move on, mm-hmm. if we can, yeah. from just an unbelievably distinguished career as a special forces soldier. What happened next? Because so I'm I, rather. Can I just point this out? Yeah. I'm the one that did three years of tap dancing, fencing, Stanislavski technique, Shakespeare, as your, as your <laughs> father. Oops, Mrs. Right. Uh, You're the one that ran around the world, yeah. serving his country in the most the extreme way you possibly can. Mm-hmm. You've been in more movies than I have. <laughs> I've been in two. But that's more, it's two more than I've been in. How'd I, that come I, about? Um, well, you did CP, didn't you? Close yeah, protection. I did. Yeah. That's where I started. I started the other side of the camera looking after people. Let's, name, let, let's, let's, name some, let's drop some big bombs um, here. Okay, so the first, first, job. first job was Tom Cruise. No, actually, it wasn't. Oh, it was when I was in the parachute. It was Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, you ready? <laughs> Mate, Hulk Hogan. It was hilarious. It was here at Wembley. They came. He came over. To, they were doing this wrestling WrestleMania thing, or yeah. whatever it was. And what a lovely bloke! But I remember him looking at me. He's huge, and he was. I could see he was thinking, "Is this bloke hard as nails? Is he mental, or what is it?" And I just played it cool. And he, if I says sit down, he sit down. <laughs> really? up, yeah. But I remember on the night. He came, said that if you said to me, I'll do that as well. <laughs> and I'm not Hulk Hogan. But go, but go on, go on. Sorry. I remember on the night standing next to him to come into the arena, and there was two beautiful women in front of him. And they, they were, you know, big girls as well. Yeah. And he just picked them both up, one in each arm, sat them on his shoulders, and just walked down. And I was like, <laughs> looking at him thinking, and I'm supposed to. <laughs> Yeah, so he was the first one, yeah. and it was a bit of moonlighting work when I was in Parreg, as we do. Yeah, because we needed the money, and that's where a lot of this. Even when I was in the regiment, <laughs> that this is where it started for me again. Yeah, and it was Tom Cruise was the sort of biggest player at the time, and uh, a mate of mine, um, he just says, "Look, he, he goes, I've been let down. He goes, any chance you can help me out?" And I had a bit of time off. I had uh, four or five days off. So yeah, I'll do it, no problem. So I flew out to Rome and met Tom Cruise, and again, it was brilliant. I met him a private airport and um, he was like, I knew him. He just had such a great rapport yeah. and what I loved about it was Charismatic the respect. man, right? Yeah. Obviously, well, the biggest movie star in the world, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I just, you know, I says, right, this is the situation. But everything I said about the security was right, fantastic, great. Because all I need is to be able to do this, this, this. If you can make it happen for me, it'd be great. And we had great respect and mutual su- uh, supporting each other on what needed to be done. And, you know, I had a few little incidents while I was out there with him and it was great. Worked really well. Other ones? Um, um, then, who was next? Um, Russell Crowe. How'd you get on with him? I get on really well with Russell. Uh, he, you know, you've got to stop him fighting, not people trying oh, to want to fight I've him. I've had a, a dalliance with him. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I can imagine. You, I could yeah. see it. He's just yeah, one of those people. I, I, the, the, the front page of the Sun was Grant won Gladiator Neil. <laughs> it was. Man. Check it out. Uh, yeah. Good one. But yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> to place the to- a toilet in Zuma. There you go. <laughs> but that's, a, that's another day. I'll tell you about that yeah, afterwards. You'll have to yeah. On a beer. yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of no, no, no. Him. Russell, Russell's one of those people that needs protecting from himself, right? Yeah. He's well, a great bloke. Not anymore, apparently. No, he's, he's, uh, he's calmed down now. But he's um, he's done all right for himself as well. He has, yeah. I mean, frigging hell! I remember looking after him, right? Um, the night Ricky Hatton won the world title up in Manchester. They'll go up some time again. Yeah. So. He, I'd looked after Russell quite a bit, but he came over for the fight because he'd done um, Cinderella Man with um, Silver Screen, I think. Yeah, yeah, boxing, battle boxing, yeah. And he, the guy Ricky won the title off, Vita Sue, was a world champion. He trained 
um, Russell. Right, right. So what they were going to do was, if, before they uh, launched Cinderella Man, they were going to get Russell to get into the ring at the end of the fight with Ricky Atten, hold up the belt. Of course, he didn't win, did he? <laughs> and I told him this was going to happen. And it was, I'll tell you what, mate, you, you got to be, think, picture this, right? So it's a Saturday night fight in uh, Manchester. Man City have just played at home. Ricky Ann's just won the world yeah, champion. Yeah, well, and Russell's there to support the opposition. Well, he walks in, he walks out. So I go out to do the recce. I walk out to the, the, the arena and it's just the man. It was it's 20, 28,000. It's gone mad. Yeah. Drunken mad man for it. Yeah. I'm like, oh. really hyper. I'm like, so I walked out. I said, Russell. Tell you what, you're braver men than me. I'd rather do selection, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm joking. I, I, I wouldn't. Tell you what, mate. I, I, I felt that way. I, I was like, right, listen. I said, get low profile. Keep your head down low. Do <laughs> not piss these people Keep low profile. Yeah. yeah, that'll happen. So what's he do? We walk out and he starts doing that gladiator thing. <laughs> and the, the whole crowd's like, Whoa. and I'm like, uh, he goes, right. He, 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 he his should pants. have gone, oh, you're not entertained. Yes, goes, we are. He's where we're sitting. I said, I don't know where you're sitting, mate, but I'm going <laughs> that way. <laughs> Yeah, so I looked after Russell. He was great, great fun, good, good guy to work with, to be honest. And um, and then I went to who was next? I think it was uh, Brad and Angie, I think. And that's when Brad left, Pitt. Yeah, Br- Brad who's just Pitt right. I've just Angie. mentioned. I mentioned this twice now, but it's about time he won an Oscar. I yeah. was allowed to get one. Good I on him. I didn't realize. He's a fantastic actor. I'm, yeah, a, big, I'm a big fan. Yeah, they're, they're both are actually. Yep. But yeah, I was here at the time at uh, the HAC. That was my no, right. my leaving call. Honorable. Artillery company, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was there. Um, again, I got a call. So that's this is your this is your departure. This is my departure out of the military now. This is my leaving. Hmm. I had a bit of a set to down the road there, and I, I was unhappy, and I, I took a bit of leave. And during that leave, I went out to Prague and met Angie and Brad, and she was filming a film called Afterward. Wanted. Once filming a film called Wanted, yeah, which is about an assassin, isn't an it? An assassin, yeah. A weird one with uh, P- uh, Piers Morgan, with Morgan Freeman, yeah. Yeah. It'd be more fun if Piers Morgan had been in it. I tell you what. <laughs> He'd have been in the V. Joking. Yeah. Good old Piers. We love him. Yeah. We love you, Piers. Um, so, yeah. So, so you spend time with all these yeah. these Hollywood A-listers, but you actually form a really strong relationship with Sean Penn. Yeah, right? I did, yeah. I, I, I basically, I'd met Sean along this journey while I was with them, you know, various, as they do, they all cross over at some stage. Mm. And we ate it off. He, he, Sean never had security and, you know, he'd come and talk with me all the time. We'd have a beer. Brad was uh, going to do a film called The Tree of Life in, I can't remember where we filmed it. I think it was California. It started anyway. But And Sean was also in the film. So he came over and we spent three months but virtually just hanging out, you know, drinking, chatting, all that sort of stuff. So we, we formed this relationship. And then sometime later on, I end up in Haiti um, after the earthquake, 10 days mm-hmm. after the earthquake. 2010. I, yeah, that's right. And um, long story short, I ended up bumping into Sean again. He'd come out, he just formed his uh, NGO, JPRHO, and they had a, a, a clinic up on the golf course, which I you was, know. I've been, been to, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the school up there, I built that. Did you? Yeah. I went over to Haiti to donate an hospital, believe it or not. Fly in an hospital, port a cabin type hospital, build it, walk away. That was a plan. What, what, ended, uh, why did you, sorry, did years. you do it off your own bat? Or was... Yeah, off our own bat. I'd left, so... In in on this journey of being with celebrities of a business in Haiti, uh, sorry in uh, Iraq, mm-hmm. with a partner, uh, which is mentioned in the book, and then one of the things we ended up doing while we were in, in uh, Iraq, the earthquake happened, and I remember seeing it on the news. And although we were a security company, we had a very charitable arm as well. You know, we we built schools, roads, wells, all that sort of stuff in in Iraq. And I just said to my partner at the time, Frank, I says, look, we need to do something there. Was Frank at Reg? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Just be scoring with me. Right. So I said, we're going to have to, we should do something. He says, yeah, I think you're right. So long story short, I f- we had the time we were also building camps for the military around Iraq, these port cabin type things. I got in touch with somebody in Haiti. He says, what do you need? Told me. I says, right, let's donate and build an hospital. So we planned this. I was going to go out there um, into Port-au-Prince, um, make some liaison. And Haiti, take let's just discuss Haiti. It's the first ever black republic, right? That's right. They, they revolted against the, the French. French. They turned the trickler upside down. Yep. And it's the most maniated. I mean, that and the Democratic Republic of Congo mm. are two of the most maniated places. have had the most worst luck of any countries that yeah, I've yeah, ever, ever been to. Yeah. They've either got a dictatorship that believes in voodoo that's doing awful yeah. things to people. They've been Corrupt. ripped off by everybody. And the Dominican Republic on the other side is a sort of paradise, it's isn't flushing. it? It's flushing, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. When that it's just a line down the middle. It's like, you're cursed, you're not. It's exactly that, mate. It's it's one of the weirdest 
scenarios I've ever I've been through. Because I went to go into Haiti and I couldn't fly in because the runway was smashed. So I ended up in the in the Dominican Republic. In, into the Dem Republic, yeah, and driving through. And it was beaches, <laughs> paradise, normality. And as soon as you got to the checkpoint, and it, it's about 300 meters of no man's land, which is the checkpoint between or the border. As soon as you cross that border, it was like you're on yeah, another, another like planet. Stepping on, everything stepping was out of was, heaven was into down. hell. Right, yeah. The road had gone, the houses down, bodies everywhere. It was stinking. You know, it was awful. I yeah. remember, I remember this because we went not long after the earthquake, and then we went back yeah. like three months later to see because all this money was promised by all these big, big, fantastic countries like the United yeah. States of America like the UK and like many, many other countries right. and very little of that ever turned up. And, yeah. and like they, and like people went in there, sewed people up and left them so they got sepsis yeah. and stuff like that. You know, a lot of big promises made and very little on delivery. And it was when I became exactly. really aware that some really big organisations make very big promises to the media and deliver very little often yeah. on the ground. I mean, that's what I found there. That's exactly what that, mate. And one of the things, I'm, and this is slightly sick, but I will say it, the reason that I mean, and you're probably aware of this, but some of the people listening might be. Well, the reason that a lot of the buildings flat packed under the earthquake was aggregate is supposed to be made. I don't know out of sand, right? It's got it's stones with yeah. sand. You mix it with concrete, and it binds together. Mm -hmm. And what they've done on the cheap is they're taking the stones out of the out of the river, so they were smooth pebbles. So when the building shook, they went like that. It's like on marbles, yeah. But they were a pair of feet, right, sticking out from under one of these collapsed buildings. And the fattest people, well, the fattest things in Haiti in February by February with the dogs because they were just eating everything yeah. weren't they yeah. um, but it was a bit like something out of um, the Wizard of Oz it was like there were these feet they had a pair of trainers on one day and by the week we got back there there was nothing left it was mm -hmm. picked clean but anyway mm -hmm. moving swiftly on so yeah. you did that yeah so I did all the celebrity stuff and then um, it was weird I I was back home and uh, I get a phone call from Sean I was in the pub actually, and he goes like Sean does. He won't tell me what he wants, but he goes, "I need you to come to Barcelona." Oh yeah, and I was like, "Why?" And he wouldn't tell me. And at the time, I'd just been away somewhere. I'd been on a bodyguard job somewhere. I can't remember. Oh, I was with Brad and Angie. I'd just come back, and um, he said, "I need you to come to Barcelona." And he wouldn't tell me why. And I and he said, he, and "I says I can't. I'm going over to see my missus, Jules. He's an American, and he knows Jules. And he says, "Oh, tell Jules." Where did you meet Jules again? I met her in Haiti. So she was, working, that, uh, she was yeah. working for an NGO? Yeah, she's a total trio girl. I love her to bits. She just wants to save the world, mate. She sent, sets up her own NGO out there now. And we've been there 10 years. So you got to Haiti still quite a lot? Yeah, I still was out there last last month. I'm going back out. She's out there now. So, I mean, tour. I haven't been obviously back since the yeah. desert. How, how are things? Uh, well. They're never going to be good there, are they? No, it's never going to. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, it, it, there's progress, but it's slow, slow progress. Real slow progress, but there is progress. But I mean, it's the corruption and, you know, it just Mids. never seems to end. And also the fear that's created by by yeah. the voodoo. The there, voodoo the stuff, yeah. Controls. Yeah, it's crazy. There's a tower, isn't there, that overlooks, that mm -hmm. apparently is built on skulls, and it overlooks the old government building that that's I right. described as a wedding cake smashed with a cricket bat. I that's mean, that's what it looked that's like, That's exactly it? what it was like, yeah. This big yeah, just, white dough. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like somebody stepped on it. Yeah. But, but yeah, so, it's an improvement now. So you get a phone call from Sean to go to Barcelona. Yeah. Like anyway, so I, I hey, it's Sean, yeah. get get over to Barcelona. Yeah, and he goes, and, and, and I says, look, I, I ain't gonna be able to do it because I'm going to see Jules. And he goes, look, there's a ticket for Jules as well. Come over. I went, mm, okay. So I tell tell her about this. So as soon as I mentioned Sean's name, she's like, nope, whatever it's going to be. She's like, no, <laughs> goes, he, he wants me to go to Barcelona. No, and I goes, there's a ticket for you. She goes, I'm coming. <laughs> she's always wanted to go. Long story short, so. He said, when you get to the airport, tell me, I'll send you a document. And he did. And he sent me a script. So he sent me, I'm trying to read this script on my phone. I'm like, it's got my name in it. I was, what's he playing at? It was hilarious. I'm now eighth actor, Reed, an assassin. And I'm like, I've never acted in my life. What am I going to do? Anyway, so I get, I'm laughing about it. So we get to Barcelona. I was treated like an, an A-list. I got my own driver. There's a bunch of flowers for my missus. I'm like... I ain't used to this. This has got to be a Racky and Jeremy. What's it? Yeah, yeah, wind up. Beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 this is a wind up. I get to the hotel, staying in a beautiful hotel. My room's massive, bigger than my house back in UK. I'm like, wow. And, go, and then I get a message uh, come through the, down down to my room saying, oh, Sean will be up in his room at uh, whatever. He's got the penthouse on the top. You're all meeting up there. So I went up there and there's Ray Winston, all these actors, all these people. And he, they've all got the scripts. And he goes, we're going to go through a bit of the script. 
And so they're sitting around the table and, you know, Elder Sable will say a bit, he'll say a bit, somebody else will say a bit, and then they're all looking at me because it's my part. I'm like, what? So you've got Idris Elba, you've got Ray Winston, yeah. you've got Sean Penn, and you've got Billy Billingham. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like that. And he goes, and Sean's looking at me, and I go, I'm reading it. It's Americanized. I went, mate, I wouldn't say that. And he goes, well, what would you say? I said, well, grab your weapons and get off to the fucking fence now. And he went, great, say that. <laughs> I did. So I, in that movie, I just said what I wanted. <laughs> just, did I, you enjoy it? I did. I found it, um, it was hard work, if I'm honest. The, the bit where I get my arse out, in, that was filmed in Wimbledon. And um, <laughs> six hours of getting my, getting my pants down and kicking my ass. You know, because they're filming from that side, so, this side, side. That side. And you've got to get... Uh, that side. back side. So, so check this out, right? Joel Silver, do you know who he is? He's, he's a big Hollywood, uh, you know, he's like close to Spielberg. He's one of them. Right, that's he's, why he's I don't make... know him, Billy. All right, he's fair a very big, big producer, <laughs> unlike you. So he's obviously, he's on set and the filming, all, they're, they're looking in the editing thing, you know, and that, whatever you call it. And my missus is sat in there, Jules, and I'm there again, trousers down, down. another angle, here we go again. <laughs> Anyway, we take a little break. I said, all right, I've got to go to the toilet. I need to go, to go for a poop. So I'll go past the tent. I said, Jules, I'll watch this. And she says, what are you going to do? I said, watch the screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tissue up my ass. And when I drop my pegs, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a, a yeah, paper yeah, right I'm going to stick this piece of paper on Sean's face. And she goes, don't, don't do it. I, I said it as a joke. Anyway, so I'm on, I'm on set now. We're doing, going through it again. She's sat in the editing suite. I'm just about to get my trousers to about there. And I hear, ah, they scream, stop. My missus and Sean's like, what the fuck's going on? Stop filming. Everybody stops filming. She, she comes running. She comes running over to the set, the the, the van where I'm getting my pants down. She says, I can't believe you. And I says, what's, what's your problem? She's got, you've got the tissue up your ass. I went, no, I haven't. <laughs> and what had happened is I got my. She saw the white label and, and started screaming. And Sean goes, that's fifty six grand you've just cost me. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is about yeah. that, yeah. Oh, it's a ridiculous. Two minutes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was uh, it was good fun. I enjoyed it. Um and like I say, it was hard work. It was a lot of doing all that sort of what stuff. About and, the sequel? Well, funny old thing. Because in in the movie, there's an obituary an obituary for me. They say I get killed, you don't see me get killed. And then towards the end of it, we were out in uh, doing the red carpet thing in Vegas or somewhere, and Sean comes up to me and goes, I've got an idea. I goes, what? He goes, the sequel. I goes, really? And he said, listen, he goes, picture this. He goes, we're in Manhattan. It's St. Patrick's Day. Massive bands, massive crowds. I've just come out of a pub. I'm a little bit cut. And he goes, I look across through the crowd. The first face I see, Reed. You. That's your character. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> it, it never went anyway. I think uh, Sean and- You're still waiting for the, the director. Call. Yeah. Yeah, but so yeah, acting not for you. Nah, I did uh, the Tree of Life as well. I, uh, I played a uh, what, what was it? I was a, a gambler or something, and I just luckily got cut out because I didn't think the film was great. But was like, yeah. from a little Herbert in Warsaw, yeah, running around taking <laughs> people's hats, yeah, to Sergeant yeah. Major of the SAS, yeah, to movie star, mm. to NGO worker, yeah, to running your own security business. Yeah. And now you're on a TV show. <laughs> and now you're on a TV show. Yeah, which is bizarre. Do you find that bizarre? Yeah. Um, it's good working with the lads. Yeah, it is. It's it's it's, it's good as good as being back in. You know, the band's is fun. It's great. You know, uh, the, the the lads are great. Foxy, Ollie and Ant, they, they're good, good guys. And we kind of crossed paths in our military career anyway. So I knew of them. I didn't really know Ant. I'd, I'd known Ollie and Foxy, not really worked close with him, but I knew where they were. So it was, you know, when I got working with him again, it was great. It's good fun. And it's just like being in, you know, what you don't see, on, of, of, you know what it's like. You just have such a crack. It's just brilliant. Banter's good. Yeah. And th what I love about this is there's no script, not at all. We just say what we want. We do what we want to a degree. There's a pattern we've got to follow. Mm -hmm. There's certain challenges and, and we just, it just that rolls have you, on. Have you ever seen any of the people that have come through it that you thought could actually really, truly cut it? No, not really. No, not not full full on. I mean, don't get me wrong; they're all great at what they do, and they did well to get through that. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. I that's don't a fraction of selection. Man. That's a yeah. That's a it is yeah. a mere picadillo yeah. in comparison. Absolutely, a mere slice. So no, yeah. so no, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna hate me now. All the people. No, no, but, oh, I could have done this. No, you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you're doing a UK tour? Yeah, I am. Yeah, you sit there. 
And you tell people as much as you can possibly tell them. Yeah. I basically take them on this journey of um, meeting influential people, starting with the old guy at the boxing, Matt Gaunt, yeah. and, and so on. So it's it's a, it's kind of a deeper version of the book. And but do you talk about, you know, the inspiration behind you going that yeah. bit further? Yeah. Do you think that you can convince other people to do that? I do, yeah. And it's it's weird because I'm not one of these people. So who, it's inspirational. It's in, it is, yeah. Because people say, "What's it about?" And it's my journey. It's my trials and tribulations. And it ain't all, you know, reaching goals. I've gone for goals, and I've, but what else? As you say, it's occasional fights you've ended silver, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, I have been, you know, and on things I've tried to do before, I've, I've failed. But it's opened by going that little bit further and going forward. It opens up new avenues. And it's the reason I went from, you know, being security to celebrity type stuff. It's just other avenues and it's always by pushing that a little bit further. So that's what it's really about. But I tell the inspirational sort of bits in my life story. I'm not one of these who quotes, you know, take a bite to the earth and it becomes, you. I, I don't believe any of that shit, <laughs> yeah, if, if I'm honest. And statistics, you know, and yeah, so I tell this journey and people in the audience go, like, you know, anybody who's read the book can relate to it. Like you did, you know, similar to your childhood. And people go, well, yeah, I can relate to that. Well, if he can do it, I can do it. And what, what amazes me... I don't think was as colourful as yours in terms yeah. of what you got up to, buddy. It was oh. a little bit more extreme than mine, but <laughs> of the same time. But if there's a message, if there's yeah. an abiding message of your years yeah. on the planet so far, which, let's say, you have taken at 100%. Well, actually, a lot of people have sat yeah. in that chair, have, done, have taken life by the horns and shaken the life out of it. You've done it a lot more than most of them. I mean, you've lived life at a thousand miles an hour, not a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. What have you learned? That believe in yourself. Don't don't give up, and and you know don't be a, you know listen to authority. Gravitate to. I always gravitated towards elder people because I used to think they've been there and done it. Why reinvent the wheel? So I take the knowledge from el elder people, and then I decide how I'm going to use it. You know, and don't let somebody just because he's in a, a, a more of official position than you are tell you that you can't do it. At least try. Or come up with a way. There's always an option. Find it and and persevere with it. And even if you don't get to that goal, you'll certainly be in a better place anyway. So just don't give up. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank it's, you. it's been an absolute pleasure, really. really? Cheers, mate. Thanks. Thanks.